So the next, what I had asked everyone to think about was what this condition means. We understand what this means and what this means. But this red hypothesis, this HXX, HYY minus HXY squared, positive or negative, what does that mean? Remember, HXX, HXY, HYX, HYY is referring to is the Hessian matrix. And if you notice, HXX, HYY minus HXY squared is HXX, HYY minus HXY squared. So this red condition is the determinant being positive or negative. So let's study that on a new board because we don't want, we're still going to have to study this part. Let's just, this condition here. HXX, HYY minus HXY squared is equal to the determinant of the Hessian. Now, what is the determinant? Well, the determinant is the product of the eigenvalues. So this equals lambda 1 times lambda 2, where lambda i are the eigenvalues. of this matrix, hash and H. There's only two eigenvalues because it's only a two by two matrix. Hash and H, lambda one times lambda two. This is positive. What does it mean? If lambda one times lambda two is positive, that means they're either both positive or they're both negative. So this thing, H, X, X, H, Y, Y, minus hxy squared positive implies lambda 1, lambda 2 positive implies lambda 1 and lambda 2 have the same sign. They're either both positive or they're both negative. Let's work on this some more. So I'm going to slant this down so we can focus on this. They're either both positive or they're both negative. And the, the condition HXX, HYY minus HXY squared less than zero implies that lambda one, lambda two is less than zero implies lambda one and lambda two have different signs. One is positive and one is negative. So now, what can we do with that information? What does the eigenvalues tell us? So one thing to remember is what is an eigenvalue? An eigenvalue is a value such that um, we call that we can find eigenvectors. So Hessian H times V1 equals lambda 1 v1. That's what it means to be an eigenvalue. An eigenvalue is a value, a real number, such that there's an eigenvector. The matrix times the eigenvector equals lambda 1 times the eigenvector. And we also have for 2, so I'm just going to write with i's. For i equal 1 and 2. And then let's think about what happens if we study these vi's, these eigenvectors, as our v as the direction of our curve. So if we do that, then what we end up with is, consider Hessian H, the matrix, times VI dotted with VI. And what do you get? This is equal to lambda I VI dotted with VI which is equal to lambda i times the length of vi squared. So if an eigenvalue is negative, then that curve has, so we get, so if lambda i is less than zero, then the curve in that direction has a, what's less than zero means it has a local min. Then h following c i of t has a local min. And um, lambda i greater than zero, sorry, less than zero means it has a local max. Then 
H following C and T. This is for C prime of zero equal to VI. H of six has a local max. A local min for C prime of zero equal to VI. Okay? So if the Hessian is negative and they have different signs, the one has a local max and the other has a local min. So if hxs hyy minus hxy squared is less than zero, then a saddle point. Okay, we conclude that there is a saddle point. There is a saddle point if this determinant is negative. So that's this third case. If this determinant is negative, there's a saddle point. So in one direction, one of the eigenvector directions gives a, is, gives a local max, and one of the eigenvector directions gives a local min. So that's how you get a saddle point. But what happens if they both have the same sign? So let me take a break so we can do that.